here in Open Roads Designer, the flow kind of works the same. In inroads, we have surfaces, geometry, corridors. We create a cross sections. Follows the same kind of a flow. We have our terrains. We have our geometry. Uh, we have corridors. And this is where we create our corridors. We open our dynamic sections, and then we have our drawing production. So drawing production would be like where we want to create our uh, name boundaries now to create our profiles, our profile sheets, plan sheets, cross section sheets. And we can do things like placing labels so we can kind of mark up this information. We can display the annotations here. And in rows, kind of going back to how information was viewed, like I want to view my annotation of my horizontal stationing, or I want to view the annotation of a profile so I get my slopes and I get my distances, and my lengths of my tangents and things like that. Okay, so all that is now stored on in our feature definitions, which are pulling our feature symbologies which can call up annotation groups, okay? And so if we can come in and if I wanna run an annotation on a profile, I can come in and I can annotate an element. I can annotate an element and I can specify a certain annotation group because I may have a feature definition that's set up that displays a certain annotation in a certain way, but I wanna use something different. So I can override that annotation group and have it display any type of that annotation that I want. So I want my stationing to look a little different or I've got stationing, I've got a, annotation group set up that has my major intervals are a little bit less than my minors. And I just want to change the way it looks. I can come in and I can run that annotation. And so the last thing I really want to cover is kind of with, um, with reporting. So most of this, the reporting is carried up. So we have same ways to report on station offsets. We can run reports on just our general geometry, our terrain models. And where is that information stored? Well, the good thing is if I want to run a terrain report, I can come in here and, and I can see if I go to terrain, I have all these analysis, I have these reporting options. So I can report on different things. If I want to do geometry, I can open geometry. I have my geometry reports. So I can run horizontal geometries. I can run station offset, station base. If I want to run reports on my corridors, okay, I come to my corridors and I can run reports. So, or you can actually come to the home tab and the reports are there as well. Okay, so for like mainly the geometry ones are listed here, but we can run these reports and we can open our report browser and see those in a report style sheet. Same way as we could with inroads. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just tackle three main things that we uh, get asked or over the years. Where are the site tools? How do I, um, duplicate what we had as ad hoc attributes and, and geopack you know adding extra properties if you will to elements for reporting or for computations and you know the plan labeler tool and we had us you know labelers for plan profile cross section what happened to those in open rose designer and just to refresh it, memory site tools were used to assign elevation to horizontal elements to create terrains and surfaces that were nonlinear, so outside of a corridor, so to speak. And so we had tools that would assign constant elevation to an element. So for example, you know, I'll just stick this element at 10 feet above the ground, you know, 10 feet elevation, I mean. And so that would, you know, create a surface. Um, we might, you know, do things like slope from one element to another, you know, at a certain percent. So for example, I might slope to this element from the one I just created, and it would, of course, do those computations and create that surface. Other things that, uh, as far as ad hoc att attributes, I'm going to use this uh, landscape tools that we had because it kind of uh, shows what ad hoc attributes are. And let me just bring up a couple dialogues just to refresh people's memory. Um, so ad hoc attributes were, were ability to add extra properties beyond the level weight style and color to elements again for quantity purposes and so for example here i'll just like you know show placing a a cell and it really doesn't matter which what i place but you'll see and these had ad hoc attributes so what you see in red are locked you can't change that but the things that people might set as they're drafting you know you know they might change the size or the comment these are all user-defined attributes that were created 
and then could be placed, you know, on elements. And so I would see that we had this attribute viewer where I could come and identify the element, accept it, and it would show me what was on it. And if I needed to change it, I could. And of course, that would carry over to like, you know, think about pavement shapes. We could add ad hoc attributes for the different uh, thicknesses and then give you a computation for how much asphalt, binder, or so forth you needed. So ad hoc attributes were just that way of assigning all that extra information that people needed for reporting. And then finally, I'm just going to quickly show, you know, remind everyone of our plan view labeler. I'm sure if you're using GPAC today, you're used to that. But just for example, we'll come down here and I'll just, you know, select this well, data point. You know, let's just data point the origin of the cell there. And we'll get the uh, X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So the X coordinate returned down, Y coordinate. And let's say easting and northing. And you know, one of the things that people like is being able to put bubbles around the shape, having a leader on the shape, you know, things like that. And then you could save those off, obviously. And you know, so how do I get that those results in Open Roads? And so let me you know switch out of here into Open Roads. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.